Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about my Linux slash coding setup. So if I open up NeoVim, I mean NeoFetch right here, uh, you can see some info on what I'm using. So I'm using the distro Arch, Arch Linux. Um, I used to use Ubuntu, but then I just, I, I think I just like Arch better. I highly recommend, uh, if you don't know what Linux is, you should definitely try out Arch Linux. It's a really cool distro. Um, I have a hundred, a thousand five hundred fifty patches in Pac-Man, which is quite a lot. I'm using the, sh I'm using Fish as my shell, Xmonad as my window manager, and Kitty as my terminal, which is what you see right here. So, Fish, this is like the, an autocomplete or whatever shell. Um, if I go into like a sudo su or something. You can see the default. Hmm. You can see the default shell does not look really, really pretty. It has just like um, your directory, your user, and stuff. But this uh, shell, it looks kind of nice. And if I type in something like nv, it'll autocomplete it, like nvim. Or if I type in something like bash, it'll autocomplete ls and stuff. So it's really nice. Now, this isn't the default fish sh uh, like prompt. I customized this with a prompt called starfish. I mean, starship. Yeah. So if I cd into dot config, there's a file called starship.toml here. And this is why I customized how starship looks. So, if I cd into like, dev, and I just go into a random project, you can see I it gives me a bunch of inf information on this general stuff. So it says on git I'm on branch main and I'm on ver node version 17.4.0 and that's just pretty useful. You can just take a glance at that and then just see what's going on. And then yeah that's what this prompt is. Uh, for the terminal I'm using the I'm using one half as my color scheme and that's also my color scheme for NeoVim and this like title bar which I'll go which I'll go into later. But as for NeoVim, I did some customization in the VimOC. So this init.vim file is what NeoVim loads in order to like just, I guess, start up. So this is what uh, every single command it runs on start up. Uh, and I can just go through it real quick, since this is pretty cool. Uh, clipboard equals unnamed plus, that just allows me to copy stuff from other programs into NeoVim. So, Let's say I have this, and let me just copy some random stuff, and then I just, um, I don't know, mm, nvimtmp.txt. I can just paste this right into NeoVim, which is really nice to have. So I go back into my vimoc. Uh, ignore case, that just makes it so when I run commands, I can, I don't have to spell it correctly, like, in terms of capital and lowercase. Lazy redraw, that's for like stuff like macros, it doesn't have to just redraw everything, set number, relative number. Um, that's actually, we will see right here, I have these like numbers and I have relative numbers. This is actually courtesy of William Lin, uh, I, I basically just yoinked this code from his config, uh, this part, so no, and no remap. Um, when I go down, actually no wait, that's not it, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, auto command insert enter and insert leave. It sets it into no relative number, which is what you see right here, and it sets it to relative number when I insert leave or when I go into uh, normal mode. Now there's I set my default tabs and shifts to two because I like two space two, well like two space tabs, um, and set hidden. Uh, what was that again? I actually forgot what hidden does. Uh, I have speed, space as my map leader, which means that when I, whenever I want to just run, run a special command, I can just press space and a certain character to run that. So for instance, I have W, A, S, and D. Um, and that's just for Windows. So if I do split, for instance, you can see in NeoVim it's kind of cool how you can like split uh, your text editor into two spaces. And if you do like V split, you can split it vertically. And this just allows me to hop back and forth. 
so right now I'm pressing W and S, which is, I, I like, so like, uh, the gaming arrow keys, so W and S, no, A and, I mean, A and D, what are we talking about? A and D, they move left and right, and W and S move up and down, so I can go up and down, and yeah, that's really cool, and then just close that off. Um, I have K, J, and Q, so these are nice because I can open something, let's say, I open up my, uh, I don't care, bash OC. This is something random. Um, I can use space K and space J in order to move back and forth, which is nice. Uh, and just Q just closes the uh, buffer. These are just buffers, B, N, B, P, and B, D. Uh, I have no idea what these these, these are. It might be for adjusting the size of windows. And I just have a lot of um, just uh, macros, I mean, what are these, keybinds, to, um, to run files. So these are for every single t uh, file type. I have C, I have just shell, Python, C++, Rust, Java, and JavaScript. I can just what, type in space B and space E to build and run, respectively. Uh, these are just some other things for the languages. This allows me to wrap, so if a line goes too long, I can just uh, go down. Uh, I don't know how to explain that really well. Um, oh, and these are my plugins. So presence.envim, that's for Discord. It shows up. It shows up with the cool presence thing. I have cock.envim, which is conquer completion. It gives me auto completion. Node tree, that's how I it's how I browse files. Uh, vim one. Oh yeah, that's the one half one half theme. So it's the color scheme you see right here. It's a, really, it's a really neat color scheme if you want to try it out. Vim commentary, I can press GCC or GCC to like comment and stuff. It's nice to do that with. And then Vim, Vim airline, it's all of this like status stuff you see right here. It's really cool. You can see this language is Vim. I'm on line 54 out of 88. Uh, column number one, 61% through the file. Uh, just a bunch of stuff around. And Vim dev icons, that's just for uh, this no trees thing. So I can see like, it just puts like really neat icons and stuff. You can see the Vim icon right here. You can just see a lot of stuff. And then these are just some of the other config things I have. Not really important. What's kind of, uh, conquer completion, yeah. I just have a bunch of things binded to hovering, uh, like space H, although that didn't have a hover on it and then some other stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, what else? Oh yeah, Xmonad. Now Xmonad is a really great window manager. So in a traditional, like, window manager, I'm thinking, um, like you can drag and drop windows around. You can't actually do, well you sort of can, but that's not what Xmonad is designed to do. If I press, like, win enter, or meta enter, I guess, uh, it'll open up a new terminal, and you'll see it automatically positions them into what's, what I call tiles. So, I can press this to open up terminals, and you can see it open up a lot of just new terminals. And this, I feel like it conserves a lot of like screen space, you can see everything you're doing. I can also go back and forth between workspaces, as you can see up here. So this is workspace 1, which is win Windows 1, or Meta 1. Meta 2 is my coding workspace, Meta 3 is browser, Meta 4, Meta 5, Meta 6. Uh, they're just a bunch of workspaces. And if I press Win Tab, I can cycle through the layouts. And I kind of like the grid layout, and there's just, this is a full screen one, and the tall layout. That's just really neat. So if I go into my Xmonad config, which is usually stored in xmonad dot, dot xmonad slash xmonad dot haskell. And this is a config written in the language haskell. And I guess I can go see a little bit of these. This uh, this is just setting my terminal and browser. I have kitty as my terminal and I use Firefox as my browser. Uh, mod for mask is just the Windows key, so I can press that to like do a bunch of commands and stuff. Uh, zero borders. Um, these are the icons, and these are actually font awesome icons, which I really like, because it gives it, it it has these like symbols, like as you can see right here, like 
uh, for utils and for messaging, I can just use those. And these are just the hex values for those symbols. Um, my spacing, oh yeah, this is just this little gap you see right here, which is kind of nice. Uh, these are my four layouts, tall, wide, grid, and full. If you didn't see earlier, this is the wide layout, as, as you can see right here, that's wide. This is grid, and this is full. And then, um, this is just for some random stuff, just right here. Um, if I type meta tab, it'll switch to the next layout. As I was saying, I'm pressing Windows tab right now. And I can just switch layouts. Uh, meta C is what I use to kill Windows. So if I press meta C, it'll just kill a window. Um, meta return makes a new terminal. Uh, meta B makes a new Firefox browser instance. And I, this is just my Firefox browser. Um, and then let's take a look here. Meta space. Ah, uh, meta space just makes it full screen. So if I have a lot of titles open, I can press meta space, and it just makes it go to the full screen view, which is pretty nice. Um, these are just the volume keys on my keyboard because Xmonad can't actually recognize when you're pressing volume things. So if you see right here, my volume is at sixty percent. If I if I just press the volume keys, let's see. Um. Ah, oh, there we go, yeah. So if I press the volume keys, you can see the volume changing. I just have it uh, set it to that. And then this is my main, um, that's a lot of stuff. Terminal, mod mask, border width, workspaces, manage hook. These are, manage hook is, I'm pretty sure it's for X Mobile, which I'll get into in a second. Um. These are just the colors, styles for these icons right here. You can see the focused workspace is blue, the rest of them are magenta, uh, and the ones with windows in them have the underline. So on to X Mobile. The X Mobile, mo uh, the X Mobile OC I store in .config slash X Mobile slash X Mobile OC, and I'm quite a lot of stuff. I have Ubuntu as the font up here, uh, that's the font I'm using, additional fonts, I have Font Awesome. Oh, and Font Awesome uh, is these um, like icons you see right here. It's like the volume icon, the CPU, all of these icons, it's really nice. Uh, position, I positioned it on the top. BG color, these are just following the one half color scheme, low on stove, icon, root. Um, now these are all the commands that are being run, run. So if you take a look over here, you can see the clocks like ticking. The CPUs, the CPU and the memory status are updating every two seconds actually. And that's what these are for. So ST, STDIN reader, uh, that's just the input reader for this. It's reading what Xmonad is giving us, which is all of these icons. We have CPU which is this thing, and I'm telling it to run every two seconds. This is a memory, I'm telling it to run every two seconds as well. Uh, it's giving you the weather, so it's 90 degrees Celsius outside right now. Uh, and I just have these icons. This is just a lot of nothing, I guess, because it's just, it's just giving me the little icon, like the sun right here, which is kind of nice. <laughs> I think I spent way too much time working on that. And then I have date, which is this, and time. So date and time are up here. And this is my template. I just have all of them laid out right here. Nice. Mm, and for Xmonad, let's see. Uh, Xmonad launches, it, it's based on, I'm pretty sure there's display, display Manager X. So I have this dot X profile, I'm pretty sure. And this is what's being called every single time it starts. So I have PyCom. PyCom is the compositor, which is what you see with all these fade animations whenever I open and close windows. Uh, this is actually really cool. And if you use like stuff like NeoVim or Vim, I highly recommend you set this. Set XKB map, option caps, colon, escape. 
this just sets the caps lock key to the escape character. So whenever I press caps lock, it turns into escape. And that's a lot easier for my pinky to reach than reaching all the way up to the escape on my keyboard. So this is really nice if you're using stuff like NeoVim or Vim. Uh, X set root cursor name left pointer. This is just setting the pointer as you can see. I have this material cursor's pointer, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I might want to change it out because it's kind of blending in to the color scheme, but it's fine for now. And nitrogen is just the background. I have this cool background over here, and that's just set with nitrogen. You can just go like here, that, and you can check your backgrounds. Yep, and is there anything else I have? Uh, I think that might be it. Um, yeah, that should be it. So, uh, I don't know what this video is about, I just started rambling on. But anyways, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.